This is the ultimate mercy guide. If you're looking for a guide that just explains what abilities do and all the base level stuff, I'll tell you right now, just find another video because this ain't the one for you. Instead, we'll try to explain things a little more in depth and help you become one of the best mercies you can possibly be. If you like the content, make sure to like and subscribe, and you can check me out on Twitch, link down in the description below. Things we're gonna cover in this video are your yellow beam versus your blue beam usage, who you should be putting your resources into, or your target focus. Practicing max beam distance, we'll talk about that later once we get to it. Mobility and putting value to your life. When to go for res or understanding you don't need to go for res. And Valk usage. Okay, so let's talk about our beam usage. I'm gonna say this right off the bat, quit being so worried about how much you're healing for. I see so many mercies time and time again who just hard focus healing their tanks and then say to their team something corny like, I don't know how we're losing, I have 25k healing. I'll tell you why right now. You're not playing Mercy right. Damage boosting is way more important than healing. If you were so focused on healing and your team needed a lot of healing, I'll be honest with you, you probably shouldn't be on Mercy for this comp specifically. So right now, drill it into your head that you're a blue beam Mercy. We are not a yellow beam Mercy. I'm not a big stats guy. I know a lot of people are and they like to reference stats. If you're going to reference stats, let's start focusing on damage amplified instead of healing done. And that should be your new standard. With that being said, there are no doubt going to be situations where you should probably focus on healing over damage boosting. Obviously, if your tank is critical and he's out of position and needs a lot of help, you most likely probably want to go out of your way to help him. But it drives me absolutely nuts when uh, someone on your team takes about 30 damage or so and a Mercy decides to fly all the way over there to heal him for 30 health. Especially when you have a stronger healer on your team like Ana or Bap, just let them handle it. If they're not in trouble and they just take a little bit of poke damage, just let them handle the healing unless the player is right next to you and you don't have to really go out of your way to actually heal it. Before we move on, I just want to say this also. If you are a Mercy one trick, this philosophy might be a little harder to apply for every single situation. For example, if you're running like a Mercy Zen, it's going to be a lot harder to just hard damage boost players. You might have to actually focus a little more on healing your tank. You just have to assess the situation as the game goes on. Which brings me to part two. And maybe even more important, who should we be pocketing? I'll try to keep this as simple as possible for you. Ideally, you want to use damage boost for long range DPS heroes, but you can also use it for anybody who's actually in position to be doing something valuable. If you try to fly all over the place and try to pocket like a Tracer or a Sombra, obviously that's a terrible idea. You'll find out really quickly that you're just going to be dying non-stop and be providing zero value whatsoever. It's nicer to pocket long range DPS because it allows you to get value with damage boost, but you're also doing it from a very safe spot where the gameplay doesn't seem as frantic and you're kind of just like flying all over the place and getting hard focused every single second. So just make sure you're putting a heavy focus into enabling your DPS, as long as it's not a hero that's gonna force you to go significantly out of position to get value. Which brings me to our next discussion point, max beam distance. This has always been a very important thing to do, but it actually has become more important with Overwatch 2 because now you have a resource meter. The further your GA goes, the more your resource meter gets charged. So by doing this, this will allow you to get max mobility and be able to kite away from enemies that are actually able to engage on you. And it's really useful because it actually gives you enough mobility to keep up with people that you're pocketing. Just get in the habit though, you don't want to be so far back from a damage boost or healing where the beam is actually breaking from you being too far back. So just drill it into your head. I want to be max distance, but I don't want this beam to break. Overall, this is going to help you a ton. And max beam distance actually ties into my next point a little bit, which is mobility and putting value to your life. This is going to sound strange to hear, but sometimes the best mobility is no mobility. It drives me nuts when people use GA when you absolutely do not have to be investing GA. Guardian Angel is not some proactive ability where you just want to be using it just to do it. You actually want to be reacting with Guardian Angel. Even though it's a very short cooldown, if you just keep investing GA for no reason and someone catches you off guard while you're using one pretty much moving to nowhere, there is a high probability you get punished for it. So to my point, if you don't have to be moving somewhere rapidly, don't use GA. Have it ready when you need GA. 
With Overwatch 2, they also changed pretty much the complete dynamics of Mercy's movement. And actually made it a lot better. Keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be really important to refer to the resource meter and how it actually works. Pretty much, the higher it's charged, the higher or further you will go in any direction. Although Super Jump was in the game for Overwatch 1, in Overwatch 2 they just made it a lot easier to execute. All you have to do for this is to just GA to your target, and whenever you're ready to launch into the air, you just press your crouch button. Just be careful of where you're using Super Jump because if you're using it and you're out in the open, when you're in the air, you're actually a very easy target to hit. So it's very good to use, just make sure you're using it in the actual right spots. And then you're going to have the GA Slingshot. Pretty much all the slingshot is, is you commit your GA normally, and at the end of it when it's ready to use, you hit spacebar or whatever your jump key is, and it's going to take you whichever way you're facing. This is such a big change because now with GA slingshot, you can actually maneuver pretty much in any direction you want to, which gives you a massive uptick in mobility. Keep in mind also now, you can actually slingshot backwards. It's literally the same exact concept, you commit GA, but instead of holding in your W key and jumping, you want to hold in your S key and then hit jump and it'll send you backwards instead. Best advice for this, I honestly would say just go into the practice range after hearing all this and just mess around, see what you can and can't do, and then just go from there. Part two of this discussion, valuing your life. What do you mean by this, you might ask? To me, you need to prioritize yourself over everybody else all the time. There's a couple effective ways to do this. One would be using natural cover. Especially against teams that run like snipers or anything that can one-shot you, what is the point of actually peeking and being able to see them? I'll tell you this, the cons absolutely outweigh the pros. There pretty much are no pros. So even though you're real curious, you kind of want to see what's going on, just don't peek. Make it your goal to not take any damage at all, because the less damage you take, the more likely it'll be you're actually surviving. Another good thing to practice when you have your beam actually locked onto a target is to practice shifting between LOS and actually seeing your target. That way if you do it quick enough the beam doesn't break, but you spend less time in the enemy team's sights. Another quick tip too, you cannot fix stupid. If somebody on your team is doing something very very sus where you are certain there's absolutely nothing you can do to save them, do not try to save them because most likely you're just going to end up dying also and then you'll definitely lose that fight. So just to summarize, try to take as little damage as possible and always try to make it a goal of yours to be the last person to die on your team every single fight. Okay, now let's go over Mercy's Resurrection. This is a very powerful ability, but I feel like people always make the same mistake. They always feel like something absolutely has to be rezzed back to life and they end up getting killed in the process of trying to execute it. Or here's another scenario. Someone dies mid-fight, and you're trying to support a teammate on your team who's taking damage, you decide to go for the res. It works, but the person you were pocketing has just died. So understand that sometimes, it is okay to not get a res off in team fights. Even though you lose somebody, it does not mean that the fight is over. It's hard to pinpoint 100% accurate advice of when to res something and when to not, because ultimately it does really depend on who your team is and who the other team is and what's going on at that time. Just understand that it doesn't always have to be forced to win fights. Some other helpful advice, if you're going to go for a risky res, if you have Valk, sometimes it's worth investing because it gives you a little more mobility while performing the res. Which brings us to the last point, using Valk. To be honest, Valk is one of the weaker ults in the game, but there still are some ways to get some good value with it as well. One we already mentioned was using it before you perform a res to get increased mobility. I would say that's worth it. You could also use it pretty selfishly as well. Pretty much any situation where you're in trouble or you feel like you need to get out quickly, you can absolutely do that because again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to value our life more than anybody else's. But it's also okay to use if you have an ally who's maybe extended further away than you and you can't really reach them. It's also okay to use it then to possibly get to that target quicker and give them increased healing on top of that. Now option three, probably everybody's favorite, is busting out the good old pistol flying around and doing a bunch of damage. And I'll be honest with you guys, though it might seem fun to do at the time, generally I feel like this is probably the worst way to use your ult because there usually isn't too much value that comes with it. Usually how it goes is, like I said, you pull out the pistol, you fly around, you try to do a bunch of damage, 
And next thing you know, the ult's over and most of your team just died anyways. And you didn't get any kills. So here's what I'll say. If you're going to bust out the pistol, at least do it on a target where you have the confidence that you could maybe kill the target in a timely manner. Instead of trying to kill a target that takes like 8 seconds to actually do it. Thank you guys for hanging out and sticking around for this long. And like I always say, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comments below. Or you can find me on Twitch, link down in the description. Or I'm also going to have my Discord down there as well. You can join my Discord and that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. So if you want to get a hold of me directly and have me respond quickly, just uh, hit me up on Discord. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you later.